The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 13th. The magical Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that out to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our tiger stand, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of red out there, sort of. Nothing significant just yet, except for the semis. They're down a little over 1%, but the Dow is off. Basically, it's flat down four points. S&P's off seven. Uh, NASDAQ 142. Russell's down six. Semis off 42 points. Trendy's down 94. You've got gold trading up six bucks at 1943.90. It's going to complete a TD9 count bottom today. Should rally further. Silver, on the other hand, does not have a bottoming pattern, suggesting that it actually wants lower prices off seven pennies as we speak right now. Light sweep crew, we're going to be rolling that into the January 24 contract. Right now, the uh, December contract up 63 pennies, trade out at 77.80. Natural gas up 11 cents. It could form a buy the D point pattern today. And a 30 year treasury is just consolidating with inside its daily profile right now. Currently printed at 112.29. What are the markets doing out here? Hope everybody had a great weekend. Let's start by taking a look at Let's go to the weekly time frame charts. These are for the equity futures. We'll go take a look at the daily because the signals on the daily say, hey, we may want to take a look at what's going on on a weekly basis. So, for example, on a daily basis, uh, Friday's close uh, inside the ES mini. Uh, was a close above its TD9 count breakdown level. It was up at the 44, 22, 23-ish level, my recollection, and we closed above it. However, to get above one, and, uh, ordinarily I would have said, hey, we're in breakout mode. However, we've got to take a look at the next time frame up. When we take a look at the next time frame up for the ES Mini, we can see resistance up at that 44.33 level. So it's going to need a close about 44.33 on a weekly basis to tell us that we are in a breakout mode out here. That's for the ES Mini. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ is going to complete a TD9 count top today. As price, price or price, depending on how you like to say it, as price is approaching a sell zone. The sell zone is established by that bear structured weekly profile. And the sell zone between 15,726 and 16,125. In other words, no breakout inside the NQ on its weekly time frame. The same can be said about the Dow. Now, each of these have confirmed by the D point bottom pattern. That took place two weeks ago. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, its resistance level, its key resistance level is 34,472. In the case of the Russell 2000, it's so far away from it. It being 1842, right now it's trading out at 1704. So the Russell's got a mind of its own. But in the other three equity future contracts, we're not seeing any kind of a breakout as we speak just yet. If we take a look at those, we'll just stick with this background, black background. Well, actually... 
Here on the daily time frame, the ES Mini can see that descending trend line as well. So you've got weekly profile resistance. You've got daily trend line resistance out here. You can see the breakout in essence on the daily NQ. Actually, the Dow also closed above the top of its daily profile on Friday. Now, second consecutive close above 34, 315 would be uh, would suggest a further rally. But we want to pay attention to those uh, daily time frame charts out there. And the real question is, really, if we go back and let's do this here. Um, get to this. Let's change screens out here. The real question is, and I don't have the answer to this, or maybe I do. Uh, the uh, real question is, can the NASDAQ pull us down? Can it control all the markets and pull us lower out there? Because when we take a look at the NQ, and if we go take a cash indices, we're going to see something similar. The NQ is going to complete a TD9 count top. We've got no topping signals or patterns other than getting up to resistance levels. We already explored those on the daily and weekly time frames out here. Uh, so other than the ES Mini, the uh, Dow getting up to resistance levels out here, uh, it's really about the NQ. is the only one with a topping signal. Probably I should restate the question, and the question should be restated like this. Can the NQ or the NASDAQ 100 and the semiconductor index pull us lower? So those are the two areas that we want to spend some time with. So let's just stick with the NASDAQ 100 as we speak right now. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the uh, top 10 holdings with inside the NASDAQ 100. So if you give me a moment, well, I didn't have those up, did I? Hmm. Very smooth move out there, Steve-O. You had a thought in mind, and then you don't even follow through and do it. So I'm going to get those charts here to populate. My apologies. It's going to take uh, just a few moments at least because of the things that I have running. And we're going to – this will populate, I uh, think, about 16 or 17 different charts for their daily time frame. But what you and I want to look at is what's going on underneath the covers. And I believe it is about 50%. Uh, that the uh, top eight holdings with inside the uh, NASDAQ 100 um, uh, make up 50% uh, of the uh, weighting or close to 50% of the weighting inside the NDX. So that's why it's so important to take a look at what's going on under the covers. We're going to do that momentarily. It's on the next date, not the top eight. So yeah, I'm going to change screens here. I will get over to those top eight holdings. Of course, everything here needs to complete before I can really do all this. But now we're at the top eight. The top eight Apple is one of those. We'll take a little bit more detail in Apple. We've got a request from G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. But we do know G-Man here. And take a look at the daily time frame chart for the number one holding with inside the NDX 100. Today will complete a TD9 count bottom. Now, what should take place out there? I'm sorry. Today will confirm a TD9 count bottom. Tomorrow will complete that pattern. So we can say that after tomorrow, we should see price pull back to test its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 179.23. The same pattern is set up inside of Microsoft. Microsoft will confirm a TD9 count pattern today, complete that pattern tomorrow. Now here, price is above resistance. Resistance was the top of its profile. Old resistance will become new support or could become new support. So its pullback, its first battle would be at 364.79, below that 358.77. If we take a look at Amazon, there's a request to take a look at Amazon. That's for G-Motion. We'll look at that a little bit further. But in the case of Amazon G-Motion, this negated its TD9 count top on Friday. It was unable to take out its breakdown level. The breakdown was at 143.57. We know that when you get to a resistance area, that can be the sign of a top, whether it's a profile, whether it's a trend line, or in this case here, whether it is the TD9 count breakdown level. If we take a look at NVIDIA, We'll confirm a TD9 count top today, complete that pattern tomorrow. That says it should pull back towards that 454 at 92 level. We'll finish take a look at the NDX 100. We come back from this break. And then after that, let's go take a look at the semis because we're trying to answer that question. Can the NASDAQ 100 and the semis be the two that take the rest of the market slower? We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, top eight holdings that make up the NDX 100. We've gotten through a few of them. I believe we stopped at um, Amazon, uh, no, at uh, NVIDIA, which is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count uh, top today. It'll complete that pattern tomorrow. Again, that should pull back price back towards its oscillator and change line, currently printed at 454 and change. Facebook, Meta, is going to complete its TD9 count top today. So I want to take a look at that. It's completing it right where it formed a prior TD9 count uh, pattern out there. As you can see, and that's in the lower left. We take a look at uh, Broadcom. Ab goes to ticker symbol. It's going to confirm a TD9 count top today, complete that pattern tomorrow. The same thing with Google. Uh, Tesla, not the case out there. What I've got Tesla doing right now is trading above the top of its daily profile. And it closed above 219 and a quarter today. Should get a run for its recent swing high. That recent swing high was January, I'm sorry, November the 3rd. The volume on that was 119 million shares. So far today, we're up into it with 53 million. So it's moving to that swing point <coughs> with volume. Now, what Tesla could be doing here is actually setting up an A to B equals CD pattern. It's taken on this swing point, again from November 3rd, doing it with volume. And therefore, if price is able to close above 218.40, and if it was able to do that today, it would confirm an A to B equals CD to the upside. We don't have that pattern just yet, but it is something to keep an eye on based upon today's volume move higher out there. So what we can see here is these are the instruments that we need to pay attention to. It's not just one or two. Most of these, not all of them, but most of these have uh, topping patterns out there and so we want to pay attention to those intraday charts over the next couple of days out there looking for a market turn let's go on the second portion of that question is what are the, really the semis doing they're the ones that are trading the lowest tom g wrote in and he exited his position i believe it was on friday he's looking for an entry point so the first place for us to take a look at the semis we can take a look at multi time frame charts so if you give me a moment i'm gonna get the screen set up here so that we can do that 
and make sure I'm in the right spot. We're in the wrong spot right now, but we'll be in the right spot here momentarily. And here what we're going to look at is the intraday. Well, really, we're going to look at multi-time frame uh, screens here for the semis. Just get their message. So we take a look at the monthly chart out here, Tom. Right now, we can see that prices trade above its green oscillator and change line, even if by a smidgen. But even if by a smidgen, that's a bullish signal. That would suggest to move up to the 36.74 level. If I take a look at the weekly chart, price closed above the green oscillator and change line last week. Gap lower right now that's acting as a resistance level but if on a weekly basis we get a second close above that oscillator and change line which is green and that's bullish would be 35 51 82 a close above that at week's end would suggest that these semis are headed higher i know you're looking for a pullback and we're trying we're, you know we're going to try to get there the daily time frame no top no a to b equals cd pattern but no topping signal in place when we take a look at the semis so what's that telling us well, when I say no top, what I really mean by that is that on Friday, price closed above its TD9 count breakdown level, and that is at the 35.57 area. But today, price is trading below that. You know Stevie's rule. You've got to have two days consecutive days above resistance or two consecutive days below support to suggest we either have a breakout or a breakdown going on. And we don't really have the breakout signal just yet or just now at 11.21 in the morning. On the 195-minute time frame chart out there, what do I have? Not much with regard to a topping signal. There's no A to B equals CD pattern. If I look at the 130-minute chart, so when we take a look at an indice or an instrument that trades for six and a half hours, these are the time frames that we use. And the reason we use these time frames, such as 195, 130, 65, they divide equally into a 390-minute day. That's what we have out there. And so we want to look at equally time frame bars when we're doing our technical analysis. The 130 minute time frame chart, the 65 minute time frame chart, the 30 minute chart, the 50 minute chart, each have at least Rogeman indicator patterns with today's gap to the downside. I take that back. The 30 minute chart has a wave number seven pattern out there. That is letter G, a very small portion of the Chapman wave. So in those chart time frames, Tom, what they suggest is a move lower. And I'll give you some numbers. I'll sh uh, these would be the numbers you would consider where you could enter. You'd like to see some type of bottom pattern, although just getting back to support can be that. But you'd sure like to see some type of bottoming sat pattern out there in one of the intraday time frames. So on the 15-minute basis, 3508 is the number. 3487, we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart. On the 65-minute time frame chart, not even going to give you that one. Why? Because that's so far down the uh, pipe, that uh, which is at 32.40, that uh, it, we're just not going to go there. On the 130-minute chart, which has that Rhodes Mintum indicator top, the first level here, and this is probably key, is that 35.31-ish area. I say ish because it's the oscillator and change line, and if price is able to close below it, if price pulls back or higher, that's going to change by a buck or two. But if price does close below that, that's probably a signal that we're likely to move lower. We'll come back to the semis because we've got call ahead seating here and we've got a caller on the line and it is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, uh, I'm doing very well. I had a very nice weekend. Hope you did the same. And Steve, I'm calling to ask you a question about Comex Gold, that Dees Gold contract, please. Yes, go right ahead. Steve, I speculate the uh, Friday and Monday lows thus far. That's 1937 and 36. Uh, I speculate that's a tradable bottom. So that's my speculation. Of course, not a forecast. And, sure. you know, uh, time's going to prove me right or wrong. Uh, what I will just observe, just remember now, COMEX gold uh, is not gold. It's a futures contract. Uh, it's leveraged. And it is not the same as underlying one-day delivery cash bull, uh, gold bullion. And uh, with having made that disclaimer, I observe that the um, uh, the Comex, these Comex uh, price for the Fib 382 pullback is exactly at 1937, which we hit. Uh, Friday, we hit today. We're a bit higher. So I speculate that's a tradable low. Steve, my question to you, sir, is could you please tell me, according to your work, what will prove me right and what will prove me wrong? Um, so that's my question for you, sir. I'd like to take your answer off air and just listen on Tiger TV. 
Absolutely. Happy to do that. Hey, John, thanks Thank for the uh, question. You bet. And uh, nice to speak you, speak with you. So what John's talking about, uh, at first, the chart patterns are confirming his thought process here, and I'll explain why. First, we start off with the daily time frame, the upper left-hand chart out there. Today is going to be the bar following bar number nine. We have a successful TD9 count pattern. The answer to John's question, what would prove him wrong on this trade? It would be a close blow today's low, whatever that low is. Let's assume that that low is in, and that's a pretty good assumption at this stage of the game. Well, that low out there, the number right down on your padded paper, folks, is 1935.60. John already covered the .382 retracement of the last leg out there. We don't need to do that. Instead, we have another confirming pattern to help him with that daily time frame analysis. Now, if, if uh, what should happen here... Whenever you form a bottom, price should make its way up to resistance. In the case of gold right now, that resistance level happens to be the bottom of its daily profile, which is also matching up or lining up with the oscillator and change line. 1975.60 is where price at least should get to. If price can get there and get above that level, the next area to be paying attention to will be 1986.60. If this is only a counter trend move, that's where price would find resistance. That would be the center of its bearish structured profile. We get back to this break, we're gonna tell you why all the other time frame charts out here are confirming John's idea that it is a tradable bottom in Goldilocks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We got gold trading out at 1947.70. That's up 10 buckaroonies right now. So when we get a bottoming pattern on a daily time frame, or whatever the time frame it is, you always want to see those bottoming signals on the shorter term time frame. So here we take a look at the daily. That's got that TD9 count top. Next time frame that I use out here is a five hour chart, then a four hour chart, then a two hour, one hour, 30 minute, and then take a look at the 15 and the 10 minute. Well, it turns out that at 10.30 this morning, I'm looking at the 30 minute time frame chart right now, that confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. So that was confirming that daily TD9 count bottom. It was not uh, much further after that at 11 o'clock when you got the same confirmation on the 60 minute time frame chart. Now, in the case of the 60 minute time frame chart, uh, it is also trading above the top of its uh, profile, as is the 30 minute chart. Those are really bullish signals. 15 minute chart, it's not so much the bottoming pattern that I have on a 15 or a 10, because I really don't think I've got that other, maybe an A to B equals CD to the downside out there. What I really want to pay attention to is the bar number nine of a TD9 count uh, is uh, just completing as we speak right now. That'll take place at 1140. So nine minutes from now, what you want to do, it, you know, if I, I've got a number of requests that are in, so I don't know whether we get back or we take a look at it or don't, but come the 1140 time frame, just note on your pad of paper, whatever that high is. If price trades above that, closes above that level, tells you at least on that 10 minute time frame, you've got a strong upward momentum move and price should continue to move higher. Move higher to where when I take a look at the next resistance levels out here uh, in gold, I really come back to the uh, uh, the four hour time frame chart and the two hour time frame chart and the five hour time frame chart, each which have roads meant to indicator bottom patterns and each have resistance, John, at the 1954 level, 1954.10 to 1954.40. So I think that's where price is headed to. There may be a retracement with this 10 minute TD9 count pattern. Now, let's assume there's a retracement. If there is a retracement, the price chart would be around 1942. So somebody looking to try to get in on this gold trade, you'd love to see that retracement. You'd love to see price pull back to that area, test and reject that green asset and change line. That could then be your entry point into a long gold position. Otherwise, 1954.40 is going to be the next line of demarcation where a battle should take place. Now, what I will share with you is on a five-minute time frame, and we've got three minutes to go here, it's negating its TD9 count top. And so this is telling us about a strong momentum move to the upside, also telling us that we may not see a TD9 count top that takes hold on that 10-minute chart out there. So just some uh, thoughts. Uh, John, I hope that helps you out with regard to the trade, and I agree with you. Uh, you've gotten a bottom. Of course, anything can happen, folks, but what we look is for are patterns that uh, allow us to make judgments as to whether to enter, exit, or sell a position out there, and Goldilocks is giving us a perfect uh, perfect um, set of charts out here to tell us that, yeah, there is a bottom in place for gold. Now, that should pull the GDX higher out there because of its directional correlation. Uh, Joe wrote in and wants to take a good nugget. Uh, so first, let me get back to uh, the request. Uh, the, first, we were taking a look at the semiconductor index. And when we took a look at the semis, I think we we're just looking at its multi time frames. In fact, I'm certain that's what we're looking at. But much like we did with the NDX 100, we really should look at what's going on underneath the covers. So now let's pull up the semi holdings. I'm going to go ahead and change panels. What's going to show up on your screen right now are the second eight weighted positions, but we want to take a look at the top eight weighted positions. And that's what we're going to look at here momentarily with AMD being number one. AMD's got a TD9 count top that's going to complete today. Price should pull back to 111.31. Avgo Broadcom's going to confirm a TD9 count top, complete that tomorrow. Price should pull back to 925. TD9 count top is going to confirm today in NVIDIA. It's going to complete tomorrow. We should see a pullback towards 455. Intel. Uh, still has a TD9 count top. Only way that gets negated it would be a close above 38.90. It's taken hold, price with inside profile. What Intel should do is pull back to the 37.31, 37.71 level. Uh, TXN. Don't have any pattern there worth noting. Qualcomm has got a TD9 count top that's going to complete today. Micron is going to complete a TD9 count top today. In the case of Qualcomm, price should pull back to the 118 to 119.28 level. In the case of Micron, it's 72.03 to about 73.19. And KLAK, KLA Corp uh, is going to complete a TD9 count top today. That should pull price back to 501. Now, what uh, Tom was asking for is where's the entry point? 
Tom, the first thing we need to do is see if these patterns take hold. I remember in the socks, what we did not have was a topping pattern. When we took a look at the socks chart here, I'll just pull this over on a daily time frame. What we don't see here in the socks chart are those TD9 count patterns. But we don't really stop there. We want to know what the uh, underlying instruments are doing. And I don't recall the percentage weighting, but it's a good one. Uh, with regard to the top eight instruments out there. We don't have to stop there. We've got a few moments. Let's go ahead and flip uh, panels of my screen. Let's go to the next eight instruments inside the semiconductor, the SOX it is. This is not the SMH that we're looking at. This is the semiconductor index. It's a bit different. We take a look at that second set of charts out here. Uh, we've got a AMAT going to complete a TD9 count top today. Should pull price back to 141. LRCX should pull price back to 636. Going to complete its TD9 count top today. TSM, nothing there to report on, nor ADI, nor MCHP. Marvell is going to confirm a TD9 count top. It did that right at its breakdown level. Price should pull back to 5030. Asimil Holdings, I don't have a, a topping a pattern out there. But you can see we've got a number of TD9 count tops inside of the uh, semiconductor index here. So we are expecting a pullback. Tom, I, I don't want to give you a price just yet. We want to see if these take hold and then come here and do the same type of thing. Look under the covers, look for some uh, bottoming patterns, and then even go to the semis and take a look at those intraday charts. So I hope that that helps you out. And, uh, um, you know, keep keep in touch, and, and we'll try to find that the next bottom inside the semis. So we got that off of our plate out here. Uh, we really let's just get Amazon and Google out of the way. I think we talked about them, but let me put up their multi time frame charts, and then we can move on to the other request. Uh, this one uh, they came in from G Man and from um, G Motion. So it was we've got Amazon up first, and Amazon was request by G Motion out here. So in, in the case of Amazon, what I had mentioned is that Amazon negated its TD9 count top, and it did that on Friday. However. What it also did was trade it and close right at that 143.57 level, the TD9 count breakdown resistance area. And right now we've got price back inside its profile. So even though it negated a top, a top can be just getting back to where price broke down. So in the case of Amazon, it's consolidating with inside its daily profile with support at 135.21, resistance 143.37. The weekly time frame chart suggests that it wants to go target its swing point from September 15. Now, that swing point had volume of 326 million shares, and last week you're up with 228. So you're closing, you close inside that swing point with lighter volume, but only a rejection of that swing point, which would be a close below 140.39, would suggest that we're not going to make it up to that high. And if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, there is no top out here as we speak right now. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Give me a second here. Oh, my gosh. What did I just do? Sorry about that. Um, and so on a monthly time frame, things are bullish. Why are they bullish? Because price is above the top of its profile. It's above a green oscillator and change line. So it's really the daily that's controlling out things here, uh, G-Motion, with regard to Amazon. And right now, it's just a consolidation. Um, on a daily time frame, the swing point out here is from September 14th. Volume there was 64 million shares, and on Friday, on a daily basis, you moved in with lighter volume, 49 million shares. I think we just got a consolidation right now, G-Motion. Hope that helps you out. We'll be right back. We do come back. We go out to Martinez, California to speak with Brent. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up uh, 45, S&P up just slightly, uh, NASDAQ's down 19, Russell turning just positive. We're going to talk about the Russell 2000 with Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing well, Steve. I had a very full and I guess a very fulfilling weekend. How about you? Yeah, no, it's a beautiful uh, weekend here and uh, just wish we had more of it. <laughs> Although I don't think my back <laughs> I back can't handle too much more golf, so good to take a little bit of a breather out there. What'd you do that was so exciting? Well, on Friday, we had a wedding that we went to up in, uh, I'm not sure if you know where Geyserville, it's kind of up by Napa. Okay, sure, uh, sure. A real nice winery up there and nice venue. And then that's, on Saturday, my youngest son, he's going to be uh, having his wedding in May, so we had the engagement oh, party for him oh. and his future wife. So Very cool. Very great. cool. Yeah. yeah. I even had a chance to sneak in a little fishing in between on oh. Saturday morning, which is, yeah, so it was a very, like I said, very full weekend. Yeah. Now, did you go fly fishing? What kind of fishing did you do? I am not a fly fisherman, but okay. I, of course, I don't use any bait. I mean, I just, I fish all like artificial. Sure. Uh, like for bass fishing, I use spinner baits and swim baits and all kinds of different you know, types of lures for that. And so I was well, using a spinner bait and just, okay. yeah, you know, the area I was fishing. We didn't know how it was going to be. I haven't fished it for a while. And last time we were there, you could hardly fish it because there's a bunch of basically moss or this okay. material, sure. like uh, just vegetation that was in there that was getting caught up in our yeah, lures and really lures. couldn't fish it. So my expectations were very low and it ended up being just the opposite and, and oh, actually cool. probably one of the better mornings I've ever had. So <laughs> it all worked well, out that great. It sounds like a great weekend. Congratulations on that, and uh, uh, congratulations uh, for to you and your family on your uh, son's uh, upcoming nuptials out there. So, um, Thank you very uh, Russell, much. you you bet, you bet. So, the Russell two thousand is something that you're interested in. Uh, tell me what you're looking at. How I can best help you? Well, I've traded that the last couple of days. I did on Friday, and then I've done it again uh, this morning. I've, I'm actually just using the TNA. Okay. But I know you like to use the futures, and that's what I'm using essentially to make the yes. trade. And then I just the, the instrument that I'm actually using is the TNA. Absolutely. So I bought into the uh, weekly twenty-four dollar calls. I got in the good price, and I just if on that one, if you can look at the shorter term, 
yeah. uh, time frame charts, and I have one other one if you have time that oh, I'd like you to look at the longer term. So okay, that's sure. The first one. Yeah, no, so we'll, we'll make the time. So when I take a look at the, the Russell 2000, on a monthly basis, it's got a negated TD9 count bottom. So what that says, longer term there, 1425 is its target. It's trading at 1714. However, the weekly time frame chart two weeks ago did confirm a buy the D point pattern out there. And it did it with that nice big old bull sash candle. What price did, though, is it ran right into resistance at that red oscillator and change line. So that's your real number of resistance, a real key level of resistance on any rally. Brent, that presently is printed at 1752. It's not that it can't overtake that, but that thing has acted so strongly as resistance last week, the week before, something to keep an eye on. On a daily time frame, what I don't have out here is a bottoming pattern. Does that matter? It doesn't really now because price is trained above the top of its daily profile. So the top of its daily profile was bearish in structure, and that says that the buy area is between 1681 and 1695. I believe it's tested the 1695 level today. So as long as price remains above 1681, this has a for this has a chance to rally further. And that rally further would have to go back to its recent swing high. That was from the day of November 3rd. And that swing high, or really a swing point, so it would be between 1719 and 1779. And if price could overcome 1779, it would make run for $1,800.90. Now, on a 30-minute time frame, again, I don't have a bottoming pattern, but what we do have is we have price taking out TD9 count breakdown resistance at 1713. So its next resistance level, which is going to test here over the next coming minutes, is the high from 2.30 in the afternoon. This is back on Friday. And if price can close above that high, Brent, 17.17.10, that is going to be a bullish outcome. Now, that bullish outcome turns out that on a 60-minute uh, chart out here, the resistance level is at 17, 17.10. How about that? So we got swing point resistance, we got top of profile resistance, and price on a 60-minute time frame chart is trading into that sell zone. So what you'd love to see today is you'd love to see price close above 17, 17, 10. That would then take out a key level of resistance, and then the next area of resistance out here that I've got on a on any of these charts out here, takes us up to 1746. Yeah, that's my next area of resistance would be 1746, and then followed by that would be that 1752.80. So I like what the intraday charts are telling us with regard to what they're doing in resistance zones, and the next one is about to be tested kind of almost as we speak. So I'd watch that 1717.10 level, which was just hit, and if price can close above that, that's a real bullish outcome. Uh, one more thing on the 60-minute time frame chart, 1733.70 would actually be the next upward resistance level, assuming you get a close above that 1770.10. Is that uh, the, the, is that too much information, enough information? You know, is there something that I, that you missed that I need to look at uh, or, or give you that data point? No, that, you, you hit all the key points. That's uh, awesome. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Okay, excellent, excellent. What's the second uh, instrument that you'd like to look at? The symbol is, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because it's a, a Brazilian Perfect. company, but it's uh, the symbol is P is in Paul, yep. A is in Alan, G is in George, S is in Sam. P-A-G-S. So yeah, P-A-G-S. So I have Perfect. this, I bought it at the Lowe's. What I'm looking at that has me a little bit thinking as far as Potentially taking a little off the table as it seems to be completing an AB equals CD today. I think it hit the number. Um, but I'm just, you know, I, and I do have time, but I considering with that, you know, potentially completing it might have a pullback. I just wanted you to take a look at that. I guess on the day that would make the most sense. Sure, 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 absolutely. So, so first you're talking about an A to B equals CD pattern. I'm just going to use my other set of tools here just to, to draw that in for me. And so, yeah, the one to one. Folks, we get us up to eight dollars and twenty-seven cents. The high today has been eight dollars and twenty-four cents. So, yeah, it's completed that one-to-one -one move. But I would, I would say this at this stage here, and looking at the daily time frame chart, Brent, is that you're hitting it with a wide-ranging bar, and um, so it's not normally how the D point gets completed out there, but it can. But normally, it's a typically a smaller type bodied candle. But even that being said, whether it's 827 or it's 824, the, and or it's the next level that gets up to, which is 854, it's 831 that's really going to be your real battleground. And so 
if you're if you're concerned about the the trade and maybe taking some off, then what you would use for that, other than just your own intuition and inclination out there, is the mere fact that on a weekly basis, price is trading into the sell zone, and that sell zone is between 803 and 831. That's the center, and then the top of that bearish structured profile. And then to go along with that, you've got uh, Pasaguro Digital, which is trading just below the bottom. And I took a stab at it, Brent. Don't know that I got it right, but uh, it's trading right. Below Better the, than I would do, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> 842. So 842 is a resistance point. 831 is a resistance point out there. And above that would be $8.79. So um, I don't see any kind of a top real quickly here, Brent, for you. I don't see any kind of a top on a 30-minute uh, bar out here. So this may want to continue to move higher out there. That's the best that I've got. I hope that helps you out. And again, glad you had a great weekend. Congratulations to you, your son, and all the family out there. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care, Brent. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. Take care. You bet. You bet. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Welcome back, folks. I'm going to rifle through a couple of requests out here to get through these. First one is WFTUF, kind of a penny stock, uh, pretty much illiquid, so to speak. I mean, today it's done 12,000 shares already at a buck 75 or so, right around there, you know, 20, 20 some odd thousand dollars in. In, in any event out here, what is it doing? It's consolidating with inside its daily profile. The support level is at 147, between 147 and 198. If price can close above 202, it should make its way up to 266. That's the top of its profile. But the resistance or the consolidation area is its TD9 count breakdown level, and that's at 395. So we're going to say we've got a, a consolidation between about a buck 40 or so up to 395. That's WF. 
TUF. The next request is to take a look at the Emerging Market ETF, EEM. We take a look at the EEM out here. Price is trading above a TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 38.23. It's trading above the offset and change line on a daily basis. It's trading above uh, profile level. So price may want to go target 39.11 on a weekly basis. You've got a consolidation with inside its profile. That 38.48 level, that's where it's going to go target. That is a key level of resistance. If price can start trading above that, closing above it even on a daily basis, you should get up to that 39.11 area. I don't see anything on the monthly chart. Well, the monthly chart says you really got to get about 38.81 out there to tell you that it wants to move higher. Let's go look at the next request. This one is for Coda inside the Tiger's Den, and that is the XLY out there. The XLY right now is consolidating with inside its bearish structure daily profile. And that's between the range of uh, 160.12 and 162.54. We're at 162.52 as we speak right now. If price can, but there's also another resistance level coda, 162.72. That's a level that the XLY needs to close above, I would say, 162.72 to go ahead and trigger an A to B equals CD to the upside. That being said, you've got resistance also, a resistance zone on the weekly chart between 161.53 and 164.27 in the monthly. So as you're right at resistance right now. So there's some resistance, resistance, resistance inside the XLY. Finally, Joe asked about the nugget, but I'm going to put up the GDX. He was asking, is it going to go to a lower price out here? We covered Goldilocks on a daily basis. Got a TD9 count bottom. Uh, those of you that have listened to the show for a while know there's a good, strong directional correlation between gold and the GDX out there. So odds favor that it too has bottomed. It should, the GDX should bounce up to about the 2810 level. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks for all the requests. And I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magical, magnificent Monday.